with King David, we see his life and his lips. Like we see him, we see his story, his narrative, him walking through his life through the Bible. But we also have the Psalms, his his processing behind it all, how he is, um, you know, thinking through these things. And I think that's the beauty of vlogging is we're able to show our life, but then speak truth in the middle of it all. Hello and welcome to the Digital Ministry Podcast, where we are having conversations about the stories and strategies of sharing God's love in the digital world. Now, here is your host, a man who prefers his puns intended, this is Joshua Verwers. Hey everybody, welcome back to episode number two of the Digital Ministry Podcast. I am so glad that you can join me here today because I've got a guest that I am so excited to interview today because I believe he's got some stories and strategies that are going to help you share God's love in the digital world. Now, before we get to his interview, I just want to thank my newest Patreon supporter, Jason Mayfield, for supporting what I'm doing on the digital platforms out there. If you too would like to support this ministry, you can do so by checking it out at www.patreon.com forward slash slash Joshua Verwers. Select a tier. Help support me. For as little as a dollar a month, you can make sure that this ministry continues to do what we're doing and improve the quality, the content, and the reach that we have. Now, if you'd like to connect with me online, you can do so. Some of the best places to catch me is on Twitter or Instagram, at Joshua Verwers. I would love to keep the conversation going. Now, I told you guys we got a special guest, and I am so excited to introduce you to one of my friends, somebody who has helped mentor me in the YouTube game. He is also a fellow vlog pastor, and he has been known and called out as the Casey Neistat of Pastors. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Trey Van Camp. Trey, how are you doing today? Glad to have you with us. Dude, I'm doing fantastic. I'm so pumped. I'm in episode two. Like That is some big stuff right there. That's so right. We got waiting. you in. I couldn't think of, you know, really a whole lot of people that would be better suited for this. And, you know, I think I had talked on my live stream that I'd love to get a couple other people in here. But you were one of the first names that I really wanted to get because you have been so influential for what I'm doing on YouTube. And you're trying to be very influential for other people on YouTube as well. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's definitely been the passion. Honestly, my first like year and a half of vlogging was just very selfish. <laughs> you know, it's just very, I need to figure this out. Uh, and to be honest, like me and you, like there's there hasn't been many before us, right, that are really doing what we're trying to do is that like vlogging uh, more than just uh, just talking head videos, you know, like we're trying to bring people into our daily life as well as the talking head videos. And so uh, I just searched for a long time and I never really found anybody quite doing it. So like you said, I just kind of use Casey Neistat and a few others as kind of like my model. But then uh, Sean Cannell uh, spoke with me. He hit me up on the DMs, which is a really fun day for me. And he said, like, I, I really feel like we need a thousand more of, of what you're doing. And that really lit the light bulb of, oh my goodness, the Christian faith is always about others, right? Pouring into right. others, disciple making. And I'm, and I'm just so grateful for what I've seen happen in the ministry so far. And so that's what kind of started like a three month process of what would I teach? How can I teach it? And so you were one of, if not, I don't even know, man, where you might've been the first one to sign up, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm pretty I sure I was. Of course. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was, because if I remember right, um, we had just met. We had went down and done a little collab down in St. Joseph, Missouri. Yes. And mm -hmm. it was, I think, that ver that Sunday that you had announced it. And so we were on the way back True. from church. And my mm -hmm. wife was sitting next to me. And I said, hey, I'm about to drop some cash on Trey. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> that was such a fun time, man. I wish we had the whole day. Like that was so cool. Us hanging out at that coffee shop, making me drink coffee. It was still to this day, the only coffee I semi enjoyed. So you can hold on to that. There we go. I am I am pleased with that. <laughs> hey, for the, the people that are listening, I want to give a little bit of a clarification, I guess, if we can, or maybe just a little bit in depth. Yeah. You dropped a couple names there that those of us in the YouTube community, we definitely understand. But those that are outside yeah. of YouTube, they may not even understand who is Casey Neistat, who is Sean Cannell. Can you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? 
Great. Thank you. Yeah. So Casey and I sat is pretty much the king of vlogging. He started, man, what is that in 2015 and kind of did a daily vlog. And now it's really tapered off barely much of anything anymore just because a different stage of life he's in. But um, so he kind of started this daily vlogging and really up the ante before him, people would vlog, but it was very much just follow me throughout my day. Uh, not on the greatest camera, but but for him with his expertise, he's made a lot of movies, a lot of productions. He got a nicer camera and got like an actual really nice microphone, really up the quality and and kind of made the videos a lot more idea based and what wasn't necessarily here's me brushing my teeth, but it was always intentional. And so he really kind of made storytelling really captivating of your daily life. And so most people who are vlogging today really honestly point to Casey Neistat as an influence for them. And so he's not a believer uh, of the way of Jesus, but uh, he's very influential for a lot of people. And so that's somebody in uh, November of 2016 is when I found out about him. Before that, I never watched YouTube, like ever. I thought it was just for cat videos, people who wanted to waste their time, seriously. And I love your yeah. story, how you kind of walked in on your kids and they're like, wait, they're all on YouTube, what's going on? That was kind of my situation as well of I know all my friends are talking about it, but I'm I'm too productive, right, to to fall into that trap until I don't know what it was. I think God's providence now when I, I, I literally don't know how I stumbled upon even just opening up the YouTube app, but I watched one of his videos and I was hooked. And so with that started this process of it actually, actually that was November of 2016. I, I I shot my first vlog two weeks later. <laughs> I was like, I want to try this thing out and see if this will work out. And I kind of haven't stopped ever since. But then Sean Cannell, who is a follower of Jesus, uh, is an incredible influencer, uh, definitely not just for the Christian community. In fact, he's branded himself just as one who helps other YouTubers, other video creators. And so he has a couple channels on YouTube that are near a million subscribers. He has Think Media TV, right? He has... Um, what is it? Online video creators. Is that what his other channel called? Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, he has a lot going on and, uh, he really is seeking to empower people. What's the right gear to buy? Uh, what is the right, you know, like, um, right ways to vlog and such. And it was really cool. I don't know if you, I know you saw this, but gosh, dude, I'm such a type seven and three. I'm going to name drop right here, <laughs> but, uh, Enneagram numbers. I do want to talk to you about that sometime. Cause I know you've been doing some research on it. However, right. let's move on. That's not the point of this talk. Uh, but he actually was on like the number one, one of the number one Christian podcast, Carrie Newhoff on yeah. his podcast a couple weeks ago. And he dropped my name and I was like, what is this life that I'm living in? It was so fun. So that was really encouraging. Uh, that he was able to do that. So I can call him a good friend, a, a friend at this time. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate his ministry, his heart. Like when I met him in real life, and I know you have too, he is honestly the real deal. And I always push people to go check his stuff out because he helps a lot of people who, like what you're talking about with this podcast, who are really interested in um, you know digital ministry. I think he's one of the leading people on side of like the gear talk and more of the... Uh, you know, the non-ministry side of it, but you need to know he's definitely the number one guy I send people to. Right. Yeah, I would completely agree with uh, with all that that you're saying, because um, Sean is absolutely amazing. And you have been making some amazing waves on YouTube. I mean, you, you just talked about it being November of 2016. So we're looking at, mm -hmm. I mean, right now we're June of 2019. So wow. two and a half years been that you've while. been doing this. Um, yeah. You're not even in on three years yet. And yes, Carrie Newhoff, your name gets dropped on that. And then two of the other podcasts that are probably got the largest influence on social media and ministry would be Pro Church Tools with Brady Shearer. Right. Your name's been dropped mm -hmm. on there. They did a whole thing about one of the yeah, videos they're... that you did to church, which I want to come back to that as well. And then okay. the other one was uh, Social Media Church uh, from Neil Smith. Uh, you know, which True. I kind of uh, just mentioned earlier. He's the one that, if I remember right, called you the Casey Neistat of pastors. He so, is. How does that feel to get that, that recognition? <laughs> yeah. How does it feel to get the recognition like that? Where, I mean, obviously you're just doing this all for the king. You're doing it for the glory of God. But how does that, that feel? What is the effect that it really does on you when all of a sudden there's this recognition that starts to happen? Yeah, so... I, it's so funny because when you talk to some people, they're like, it's been three years, you know, almost three years and you're not even at 10,000 subs yet. You know, there's some people that talk like that 
And then there's others that are like, wow, that's so incredible what you're doing. And so I really kind of stick to, I think Tim Keller kind of coined this phrase that, you know, if work becomes your identity, you know, um, praise goes to your head, but um, criticism goes to your heart. And so I, I want to make sure I don't really put too much emphasis on either. Like I'm a small church pastor and that keeps me humble every day of my life. <laughs> and right. so um, I, I, I love the balance here because some people like when they see my channel and some of the waves I'm making, they're like, man, like what you do in real life must be incredible. And I, and I truly believe what I do in real life is incredible. It is a joy. Um, but I, I do think that people are shocked. Like even when I peel the curtain back a little more in my vlogs, like, oh, you're just a small church pastor, you know, just trying to make make this work and trying to build a community and it's a grind. And so that's always kind of like the humbling process behind it. My wife always like in the Carrie Newhoff um, shout out, I, I did a little bit of a dance and then I just moved on with my day and she's like, I'm, I'm honestly surprised. Uh, she was surprised. I, I think it was an compliment. I think she's like, I can't believe like you're still not making a big deal about this. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, like it is great. But I've learned uh, for being a fourth generation pastor, watching uh, people ahead of me, what happens when you do think too much of yourself or what happens when you think too less of yourself, you know? And so it's just this weird balance that I'm trying to play, um, right. if that makes sense. But however, I will say this, and I'm always thankful. Seriously, man, every time I get a shout out, like the week before I tell God I'm going to quit, like it's so <laughs> crazy. Every time I've had something big happen like that, and I know it's not going to happen every time, but legitimately, I've had times where I'm like, God, I'm done. This, it's not the progress I was looking for. I might be, am I wasting my time? You know, the, you know, the lies of the yeah. enemy, discouraged. And so it's hilarious. Every time I really feel like I am truly at the end, I'm truly exhausted. God, I just thought it would be different. And then boom, Brady Shear, shout out, boom, Dustin, you know, Casey Neistat, shout out thing. Um, yep. Boom, Carrie. Like, it's just, it's incredible. Like, God is just, it's always just been really good confirmations for me of like, keep going, you know, this will pay off. And honestly, at the end of the day, it already, there's already been so many blessings. Just keep pressing forward. Yeah, yeah. Now, you were mentioning, and I, I briefly said this earlier, because you had talked about just recently about being this small church pastor, and I can totally relate to that lifestyle. Um, right. And we had mentioned just a second ago about the invite video that you did for your church. And so I'm yeah. wanting to know how much of your local church, that small church that you've got, which is Passion Creek Church there in Passion Creek, Arizona, correct? In Queen Creek, Arizona. Oh, Queen Creek, yeah. Arizona. That's it. Um, mm -hmm. So Passion Creek Church, how much of that church is really influencing or even motivating what it is you're trying to do through YouTube primarily? I love that question. Uh, oh, man. I think the best way to answer it, I don't know. I, I hate, I love the question. I don't want to live <laughs> with an either or kind of mindset. Right, like right. I, both and, and I know you know that. Um, but like, so, so the way I've decided to approach all of this is first and foremost, I believe my calling is to be a local church pastor. So yeah. at the end of the day, like, uh, it's about my local church people that I, I just truly love and I'm truly just laboring for they're sanctifying me and hopefully I'm helping sanctify them. And so what's great though, is while I'm doing that so much, like anytime I create content, especially like the workshops or whatever I'm doing, it's not, Hey, this would be a great YouTube video. It's, Hey, this would be great for my people. And why stop there? I think this would be great for other people. That's kind of always been my mentality. So yeah. it's always church first, but let me document it along the way. And it's always been such a blessing of, wow, I, you know, I'm here investing in my leaders, but what's really cool is now churches around the nation are using it to help develop their leaders. And so that's kind of been the mentality of it all. And it's really helped me be a better local church pastor. It's helped me like, there has been times where I'm like, Hey, I would love to produce this kind of content. Hey, I think I need to do this for my church anyway. So it's really this ebb and flow between back and forth, but I usually never do something that's strictly just for my online audience. It's always my church first. And in so doing, other people see it as well. Yeah, that's good. I, I love that because um, it reminds me of something you said in the vlog, your ministry course. Uh, and I think if I remember right, it's actually session number one that you do where you talk about the, what is it? The audience attention access and access. And yeah. 
Yep. Um, and I got that order mixed up. But that audience, I remember you talking about that in the course of how, you know, yes, your audience is not just Passion Creek Church. Right. It's also, you know, really Christians in general, the body of right. Christ. But then it even goes beyond that because a lot of the videos you do are like Disney videos. Right. Um, tell us about some of those because you just took a trip recently. If I what a Disney cruise. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was glorious. It was like a, a trip with my whole family, like even my grandma and all that. So yeah. it, was, it was great. Yeah. So I talk a lot about in our course and kind of passionate about just telling everybody it doesn't have to just be in the course, but um, talking right. about the funnel of attention. And so I think it's really important for us as Christians online and offline to be interesting people where it's not just about, you know, the Bible. And I, and I think like it helps us like find common ground with other people. And so um, why would somebody want to listen to me if all I ever talk about is things that they don't understand? And so I want to relate to people. I want to kind of build a personal connection. That's one of the things I learned most from my grandfather. I think he would have been incredible if he lived in this era of video. But he was such a people person. My dad is that way too. They know how to connect with people. They know how to find commonalities and really bond there and then lead them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so for for my life and the way I view things, like some things that I love are Disneyland and I love family vlogs. I love adventures and you don't have to be a Christian to enjoy those things either. And so right. that's kind of like my biggest videos for sure. Like if you search most popular videos, like the first 10 are all my Disneyland vlogs, but it's great. Like I'm able to really reach out to people. There's people who follow my channel strictly for any time I upload Disney content, which side note, I wish there was a way YouTube would create like a notification for like a certain playlist. How cool yeah, would that be? That would be like, awesome. They always notify me when it's in this playlist, which is all the Disneyland videos, but they don't do that. But right. anyways, they should hire me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so I look at it as a funnel of like, hey, I want to develop a relationship because the people I really care about, like I love Christians, but I love the non-Christian. And so I want to think, how can I get them in? Like, how can I shake their hand? And I think the way to shake their hand is to create videos that they're searching for. And they're not necessarily searching for what does John 316 mean? They're searching for what's the best way to enjoy Disneyland that I'm taking my family on, you know? Yeah. And so that's kind of like the mentality. And I, I know that you've been kind of integrating that in your channel as well. And I think that's a, a huge way just to reach a bigger audience. That's kind of the YouTube game that we have to play. And yeah. I think there's so many blessings that come from it. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the conversations that I had just the other day, it was actually with my wife. We were sitting down here. She's been uh, running this business online and wanting to do a little bit right. of like uh, Facebook live stuff. And she flat out told me, she's like, my life isn't interesting for a Facebook live. And oftentimes people will see, you know, looking at like a, a channel like you where it's like, oh, he's got these Disney trips. Oh, his life must be so interesting. But yeah. some of the most powerful ones I've seen of you are like when you're out pouring concrete. <laughs> and it's right. like those because... Again, I think this comes down to some of your a different side of your personality really comes through the the layers that we have in our personalities. Um, what yes. would you say to somebody on any social media platform that is just kind of holding themselves back because they think my life isn't interesting? Yeah, I actually made a video. This has been something I'm so passionate about lately, like more than usual. And I made a video that I, oh man, what was my line? It was something about how like, even from my life, like I, I don't want to be interesting as much as I want to show what an integrated life looks like. I don't want an interesting life as much as it, as an integrated life. Meaning right. like I want people to see the wholeness that I have in Christ, just the complete joy and unity I have with him. And so honestly, there's also, I did a video about this, about, about being mundane. It was actually on one of our vlogging ministry calls. But like, I really think the beauty of the Christian life is finding joy in the mundane, you know, finding joy yeah, in yeah. just the little things. Like that's what separates us, right? I mean, everyone has fun at Disneyland, right. but not everyone has fun pouring concrete. And it's not always about just having fun, but still it's that joy, that, that wholeness behind it. And so if anything, it's almost, it's more of an advantage if you have a boring life and yet, because you can show people, but still, like God is good. Still, I can find joy in this. And 99% of your audience has your life or even more boring. 
right than what you got going on and right. so that's the joy of it they relate to that they want that like yes it's so fun to watch people who have luxurious lives but at the end of the day we we leave like feeling envy we leave feeling discouraged and eventually people don't want to go back to that but if you're somebody who lives your life like think about it the most famous show on netflix is still the office how boring <laughs> like they're just at the office right but you're obsessed with it because they find the joy in the little thing and i think that's what we're called to do as christians in all of life and what a great opportunity to do that online Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, I'm trying to remember, I think it was on Instagram where you, I had saw your post about that. Uh, and it was something about um, like true peace doesn't come from an interesting life, but an integrated yes. life. Um, you knew my quote more than I did. That's which, exactly what it was. Yes. Which, hey, here's just another little rabbit trail we can kind of head down. You are like the... I don't know, the king of rhymes, the, I mean, all of this alliteration, yeah. the rhyming, the things like that. Um, a, a lot of your shows, you've got, you know, documentary and the ministry mm -hmm. podcast and, uh, Q you and know, tray Q and, and tray. it never ends. What, why? I, I, I don't <laughs> know what the question is, but why? I mean, what's, what's the... Uh, the, the drive, the pull in you to lean that way with all of those things and not saying they're bad, they're fun. They're, it's no, so you, no, I'm, I'm with you, um, uh, but why it's another way to show my personality. Like okay. it's, it's legitimately how I think it's legitimately how I've always talked to people. Uh, it's how I write in my journals. Like when I am like processing what God's doing in my life, it literally is a, uh, like uh, one-liners like I, I have right. to in my own heart like that was actually from my own journal that one like okay God true peace doesn't come from an interesting life true peace comes from an integrated life like I wrote that in my own quiet time and then it eventually turned into a sermon a few weeks later you yeah. know and so that's something for me recognizing that that like this is how God has wired me like I'm super jealous there's some people which uh you know, like Francis Chan is like an easy one to think of is they can just take any story and make it so fun and engaging and they're able to weave in, you know, biblical principles throughout the story. I can't do that. Like I, <laughs> like my teaching style is here's what Jesus said. Here's the Greek. Here's some geeky things I know about it. But here I'm going to summarize it best by giving you one liner yeah. and then showing how that applies in my own life. I think that's like the process um, that I think. And so that's why I do that. As far as the whole documentary, that's kind of how it started of like, oh my gosh, I want to document my life documentary. That's incredible. I was so pumped when I came up with that. And then um, Q and Trey was like the next obvious one. And then I just got obsessed and like, well, I guess my <laughs> brand is Trey isn't everything. So that then I came up with like yester tray and all those other things. Right, right. Those are those are cool. Honestly, it's one of those that I don't see a lot of people doing that. And it often reminds me of both Psalm and Proverb. You know, Proverbs have got those True. those one liners that you remember for all of eternity. Uh, right. and Psalms just has this this poetry to it the and part right. of that is the rhyming, but the other part is just the power of what's being said in there. So yeah, I get yeah, that and, and I appreciate that too. So I totally relate. Like I hate to put it this way, but I, I really do feel an affinity with King David. Um, I really think King David was a seven. <laughs> Here I go again, dude. But like, he pursues pleasure over peace. Like I really think he has this entertaining aspect in him. Like if he wants something, he, he goes and he gets it. He's adventurous, uh, which hence Bathsheba and some bad things happening there. So it's being a seven is not always the greatest thing in the world. Right. But I think for, for King David, what I love about it, and it's actually what really stemmed this conviction to start this vlog and ministry course is I think King David really affects so many people's lives because with King David, we see his life and his lips. Like we see him, we see his story, his narrative, him walking through his life through the Bible. But we also have the Psalms, his, his processing behind it all, how he is, um, you know, thinking through these things. And I think that's the beauty of vlogging is we're able to show our life, but then speak truth in the middle of it all. Yeah. Um, I, I, like I say, like we're able to document our journey and our journal. And I think putting those two things together is what really brings life change. It's how we can relate. Like I can so relate to King David because I see what happened with Bathsheba, but then I read in Psalm 51, his confession of that sin and it really yeah. brings it to life. And so I think that's what each and every one of us, we have an opportunity to do that 
with online ministry, we're able to show our life and then kind of peel back the curtain and kind of talk about our thoughts behind it. Yeah, that's that's so good. I, I love that. The other thing that you had said that kind of just get me perplexed here, if I think perplexed is the word. Okay. You were saying that your preaching style is not as much story driven. Right. However, your online sermons in your vlogs are very much story driven. Hmm. Have you ever right. noticed that? I mean, I, I think I've only listened to a couple of your sermons that you've posted on there on the, the ministry podcast, but I, I noticed uh -huh. that as well that, um, yeah, you do a lot of the alliteration inside there, but it's very much on, um, a lot of the facts, the details it's, it's great. It definitely opens up the scripture in a new way, but then I also see you're doing the vlogs and right. you're presenting them in a story and it's, it's your faith. It's you living out your life with Christ. It's, it's you, for those that are watching this on YouTube, they can see behind your head. It's you getting across that message. Jesus is better. Right. Um, and you're living that out. Have you yeah. ever, yeah, tried yeah, to do a vlog like, for honestly, a sermon for your church, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I feel like that's partly why I don't share. I mean, I share stories in my sermons, no doubt, but that is not my like strength. I don't right. think that's not. Um, but I think it's partly because I know, oh, I'll share the story version of it later this week. Yeah. You know, like I like I'll I'll incorporate the stories in my vlogs because usually I take a principle. I take like one minute of like the one liner and some, you know, some stuff to support that. And then I go on with the rest of the vlog and kind of naturally show how that appeals in my own life. Um, but in my sermons, I don't. And so I, I honestly think part of it maybe is because, Hey, I'm going to make him do a vlog later. Why come up with a story? I'll come up with one on Tuesday. You yeah. know, I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I do think that there is like a, there is different ways to communicate. And I think that is really important to remember for some of us, like, um, for me, 35 minutes of a sermon, I am communicating differently than I am trying to do in a three minute, 33 second vlog. Right. Or, right seven minute vlog. And I think it's important to know your strengths and weaknesses and know, uh, for me, I just know here, here's one thing I've learned. I'm, I love being energetic. Like I think like, again, type seven, I'm done. Okay. I'm done with Enneagram, but type seven. <laughs> and so I know a strength of mine is my energy. Like I know that people are more prone for my YouTube, uh, to, to watch stories and watch me enjoy my life more than just like a 15 minute podcast on my channel. I just noticed that's just what people want more. Um, however, I think if for 35 minutes straight, I'm always energetic and always hmm. bursting with joy, I think it exhausts people. Yeah. And so I think that's the balance I've learned when I first started preaching. Uh, cause I first started when I was 16, I just, I lit the fire and I burned for 30 minutes, you know, and I was just like going crazy. And, but I think it really exhausted people because it's like, can you just come back down to our level? Can you teach us something? Like, yes, I'm inspired, but what does that do, you know, for me on Wednesday when I already forgot what you're talking about? And so that's why I think I've kind of shifted my communication for my sermons, realizing that, hey, I need to give you something different. Like, I know that I, you know, that there's a reason, like in your communication, there needs to be mountains and valleys. There needs to be right. high moments, but then you really bring the whisper does so much. And I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good. Now you just talked about preaching at 16. Give us some back history on Trey. For those that don't know who you are, we've been diving into a lot of the stuff around it, but you, so you're 16. If I remember right, you are a fourth generation pastor. Yeah. And you are the number three that has your name. And is that correct? Yeah. So I'm William Trey Lamar Van Camp, the third. Correct. Okay. Mouthful. Um, is there going to yeah, be a number so, four, by the way? Uh, my wife is willing to have a fourth because uh, we have all th we have three girls. My wife is willing to try for one more to maybe get a boy. I am skeptical. I don't know. I'm tired <laughs> of diapers, man. So I'm not sure. But uh, that's between my mom, me and my wife. I'll let you know, of course, on the vlog. It'll come soon. But she's thinking December where you have to really have the talk. But right, right. <laughs> moving forward. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. Fourth generation pastor. I'll do the quick version. Um, but yeah, when I was 13, when I was 12, my dad planted a church. So I grew up normal is what I tell people. My dad was a concrete business owner, which he still is, which is why I still pour concrete on most days. Thankfully, I didn't pour concrete today, although my back hurts because we poured a lot yesterday. Moving forward. So at 12, my dad launched a church. And uh, it's so funny because there's so many books on how to start a church. Back then, there wasn't really much. And we just said, hey, 
uh, we have pancakes if you come and uh, 50 people showed up and we started a church and it was fantastic. Um, but year into that, honestly, before we started the church, which was only like three months before launching, my dad got us everybody together, said, hey, we're going to start a church. And he said this, he said, I want you to pray every night. Uh, ask God what your spiritual gift is because we believe you're called to serve this church, you know, like that you're going to be a big part of us starting this church. And so every day, every night, I would ask God, God, would you please reveal to me my spiritual gift? Would you please reveal to me my spiritual gift? And I believe a year to that day, it was actually an uh, unashamed day, January 16th, 2006. Nice. Uh, I was at a Discipleship Now conference and the pastor was preaching from 1 Kings 18 and talking about, you know, Elijah, he was willing to stand up when everyone else went it, you know, in a generation that was hiding behind. And uh, God really kind of painted a picture for me, pretty vivid of like, hey, and you're, I'm calling you to stand up in a generation that's too afraid to. And so I, I walked forward and kind of the Holy Spirit led me um, of, of a conviction of I'm called to do ministry full time. And so yeah. I told my dad that. And uh, so at 13, I knew, like I knew my life purpose was to be a pastor and I didn't know where or how and all that. So 16, um, after a lot of training and whatnot, my dad gave me a couple opportunities here and there to preach. So uh, my first sermon ever was actually at a Chinese church on Easter wow. Sunday with an interp interrupter, I mean an interpreter. <laughs> right. And uh, it, was, it was a crazy experience and a really short sermon, which nobody ever complained about, right? Uh, yeah. If it's going to be bad, it might as well be short. Um, <laughs> then when I was in, I'll, I'll try to speed this up. My senior year in high school, I started a once a month gathering where I would preach. We'd have a whole service and we had like um, 30 people get, 30 kids get saved that year, which was great. Went to college, went to Calpap University and uh, got my education there, explored everything. I told God, I'll do anything but plant a church. And so I really pursued missions, went overseas uh, during the summers. Um, and God really kept closing those doors. I said, okay, I'll do revitalization. So I took a youth pastor position at a church that they were trying to revitalize. It once was dead and they're trying to bring it back. And I realized, oh my gosh, God, I think you've called me to actually plant a church. Like I see my gifting really does fit starting a church. And so came back home when I graduated from college, did ministry with my dad for a couple of years, kind of as an associate. And then they launched me out. So January 10th, 2016, we started our church that we have today, Passion Creek Church. And God's been super grateful. I mean, super faithful to us and we are grateful for it. And yeah, it's been a lot of ups and downs. That first year was the hardest year for sure. And mm. uh, we were, I was all alone, didn't have any staff, um, really felt alone a lot, really felt right. like I was in way over my head, which I was, still am. Um, but uh, it was very, uh, I think it was, I, it's absolutely what I needed, but I'm so grateful I'm not in that season anymore. It was terrifying. I really thought, did right. I make the wrong decision? It was hard. It was super hard. Um, but I now think it was all, obviously according, you know, uh, yeah. to God's purpose and, and it worked out for our good, but it was, it was really tough, but I didn't vlog that first year. I actually started vlogging our second year because I didn't even know about YouTube our first year. Right, right, right. So now you had mentioned here, there have been times and I can, I can relate to this on both sides times that with, you know, pastoring a church where it feels like you're in over your head, like you're not yeah. equipped. Um, I think you're like me where we tend to now, after we've been through a few of those seasons, we embrace that because it requires a dependency on God. Like we've never had yes. before. Totally. But I, you also had mentioned that there were times even with your YouTube channel where you felt like, you know, what is, are you even in this? Um, right. and you just kind of feel like quitting, like giving up. Can you, can you give us a specific example primarily on the, the social media front where you started to have those doubts um, and how God kind of walked you through that. Yeah. Um, I would say the one, the biggest honest, like I was almost done was the first Brady Shearer shout out. So he's given me two now. One is that welcome video, but the one before that was um, millennial pastor uh, vlogging. And so uh, that was a really good encouragement. But um, Anyway, that week before, it, YouTube gets gets annoying. Uh, there's all these algorithm changes and whatnot. And so yeah. I was experiencing a time of like growth and, and I got, you know, I, I feel like I was really growing in my subscribers and my views were going up and out of nowhere, just everything stopped. Like my views were decreasing, not increasing. I felt like a lot of the people who were commenting on all my stuff before just stopped Stop. out of nowhere. 
And so that's what was discouraging. Uh, it's the people that makes me keep going. And so like the views, I'm like, okay, I kind of get that. Um, just algorithms happen. Like, I don't want to base everything off views, although it was def definitely discouraging. But the fact that people stopped commenting for a season, I got really discouraged. I thought, well, this was a fun run. I guess, you know, people just get tired of you. And I get that. Like, okay, people are tired of Trey Van Camp. Like, Trey yeah. is everything that's annoying, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. And so that's kind of when I was like, God, I'm like, maybe I'm making this about myself too much. Maybe I need to take a step back. And so I, I think it was a heart check. Uh, that God wanted me to experience of, yeah, Trey, this isn't about you. Um, and yeah, there will be times where guess what? Maybe you were leaning a little bit too much into the cheerleading section that you needed to be. And so I think I kind of got caught off the mission. I, I was doing this for a lot of multitude of reasons and maybe it wasn't the right stuff. And so I just had a real heart check moment with God and just said, God, I'm giving this to you. Um, forgive me for making it more about me than it should be. Yeah, And uh, it was just like a humiliating moment. I just had to be humbled. And literally not even 24 hours went after that prayer. I remember it was a Wednesday night. I was out in my backyard just like literally crying out to God. So dramatic, but I was. Um, and I think a lot of, like ministry stuff was going on at that time too. But right. And then I got a DM within the next 24 hours from Brady like, hey, love what you're doing. I uh, have a few questions. We're going to feature you on a vlog next, on a video next week, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wow, God, thank you. Like that couldn't have been better timing. Right, right. That's awesome to, to have that because it kind of reminds me of even in pastoral ministry, in the physical side of it, the yeah. digital, it kind of, you know, goes hand in hand where you had mentioned, I've experienced this where ministry in any sense, it does feel like you're alone a lot of the time. Um, right. and to have that, that encouragement really, it was, it's just a, it's a shout out, but to have that, that source of encouragement to just kind and of motivate you to keep going. Um, how yeah. important is that in both physical ministry and digital ministry? Oh, it's so important. You know, like I, I think there's a reason God commands community and I think, you know, uh, exhortation is always and obviously encouraged in the scriptures yeah. to build each other up. Like we just can't do this alone. And I think uh, being an, a person in a 21st century world of secularism where um, I have, you know, I, I, I'm tempted to think that I can do it alone. I'm tempted to think that I am the captain of my own ship. It's, it's always encouraging to remember that I'm not. So I need community for the days that I think I'm all that. And I need, and I need community for the days that I think I'm nothing, right? It goes right. back to that theme. So when I'm too puffed up, I need somebody to pop that balloon for me. But when I'm too deflated, I need somebody to breathe life into me. And so yeah. I think it's so crucial. So for me, I really want to install rhythms, intentional uh, different things in my life to make sure I'm leaning into community. So I meet with pastors in this area quite often. Um, we have like a once a month gathering that I, uh, if I'm not pouring concrete, I go to my staff. I've really developed a good relationship of just, just being transparent and just, uh, there's times where we get together and we're like, we, we all admit, we don't know if we're doing this right. And we just, I don't want to say we cry together. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but we really do right. just lament with each other and just kind of like, let's talk about our struggles. What's frustrating right now? How, like, yeah, how do we good. need God to show up? Um, my wife, I have really learned it's a balance there. I don't want to just always go to my wife with the negative, you know? Right, right. And so I, I had a mentor tell me there's some things, it's not that you're hiding things from your wife. That's no. never helped. But, and I think me and you and I have talked about this in previous conversations, but there's certain things, certain burdens you should probably spend some time first telling another pastor about, right. um, rather than just always weighing down your, you know, your wife's life. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. That's kind of been really healthy and helpful for me. And to be honest, there I go again, but like, honestly, man, this vlogger ministry, like my favorite part of it so far has been the community and just the encouragement yeah. and uh, us getting together. Like those, those calls, those zoom calls are so fun for me of just, here's what's happening. Like, how, how are you doing? And, and I feel like it, we've really, uh, I don't know. It's just been a great community that I've been leaning on heavily. And I think it's what's really what brings the most value from this course is just this community that we've really developed together. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. I was just getting ready to segue because you're talking about that Thanks. community and the vlog, your ministry, that course. And for those that don't know, you can check it out at vlogyourministry.com. And this is a course that is 
something that you set up as, as we talked about at the top of the hour that you wanted to help other people really do what you're doing obviously right. for the glory of God and to really just get the kingdom purposes accomplished. Uh, can you tell us mm -hmm. a little bit more about why you started it and what it's all about? Why we as the listeners need to go run over to vlogyourministry.com and sign up right now. <laughs> yeah. So actually, uh, thanks. I hate being like the plugging guy, but I, I, I'm so passionate about it. I want people to know about it. So I appreciate you asking. Um, but yeah, our actually, so this will be our third round coming up. So we've had two different groups, but what's fun is that I've decided, hey, every, those these groups will just keep building off each other. So you can hop in. You already have hopped in on the other round of calls. And right. so I'm hoping that just, a, you know, whoever wants in, whoever's free on that Monday can just jump in on the live call. Um, but but anyway, so it starts June 18th is our June 17th is our second round. So we have from this recording 10 days, which I know you're recording uploading like on monday so yeah this anyway, will be up on monday so next week. monday you guys need to get in yeah one week and then i'll give you a i gave it to you but a discount code for your viewers but yep. anyways um so what was the question i'm just kidding yeah why did i start <laughs> it uh yeah so honestly there's like so many reasons why i started it so many reasons uh one honestly is i do work three jobs and i know you can relate to that as well yeah so a very practical level i'm like how can i um free up my time to do things I love rather than things that I have to do. So I right. very much have to pour concrete just to feed my three children. I have to do, I, I, I enjoy it less and less making websites for people. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I do as a side gig and it just gets old. Uh, so I'm kind of tired of that. So part of it is selfish of like, you know what, I want to help sustain my family. Um, and I know this is something you're totally on board with and I appreciate your perspective and all that, yeah. but I'm like, you know what? I need to do something that just blesses my family and gives me more time with my family rather than away. Absolutely. So that was like the, one of the big reasons to be honest. And another reason is, uh, I, I realized that pastors are extremely busy, even if it's just their only job. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very taxing. There's so much. And so I realized I've spent uh, now two and a half years, but at that point, two years of researching, of trying to just get a conglomeration of all the things I've learned and try to make it applicable and apply for my life. And I thought, yeah. how great would it be if when I started, I had somebody say, hey, I've done this for a couple of years. Here's shortcuts. You know, like um, there's so many pastors that want to do this, but they're not sure what camera to get. They're not sure where to start. They don't know what kind of pillars of content to create. These are things I honestly didn't have much help with and it took me forever to get to. And I thought, wow, how can I be just like a, a, a speed boost? Like how can I make yeah. it to where I'm literally trying to tear away every excuse you have from starting? So that's kind of been like the biggest passion of mine. I, I, I love how you talked about in your first episode about looking at this, you know, this phrase, the world and what is that? And it's, I love how you boiled it down. Isn't like wherever people are or something yeah. like that. Um, and I'm like, there's so many people obviously online. And I think that this is, it makes more and more sense to me, um, that the great commission will be fulfilled. And I think a huge part of it will be through online video. I think that's a right? huge catalyst. If anything at its, at its just base, is that it will help equip leaders to actually go and, and reach their neighbor, you know, even just yeah. that, but I even think we'll be able to reach the neighbor, but I digress. So like, I really, like, I want my life to really pour into this endeavor of using this online medium, the way that Martin Luther, the reformers use the Gutenberg press, you know, to, to use books to really unleash the gospel in a crazy way. I think we're on this new frontier and I just want to be ahead of it. And I want to bring as many people along the way. So that's, that's been the biggest desire. And one of the greatest benefits I had no idea would happen is the community uh, aspect of it. <laughs> like it has been such an encouragement to me. I had no idea that it would really turn into the thing that it's turned into. Cause when we right. first started that private Facebook group, it was just me posting like in random encouragements. Now, Y'all are posting something on it every day, getting feedback, asking questions, really helping each other. It's not just a, hey, let's have a question for Trey. It's, hey, hey, Josh, what, you know, how did you just do your live stream? Hey, Mayfield, how do I, you know, hey, yeah. Dennis. It's been really cool to see everybody kind of joining together and joining forces. And I think we're so much better together than we are apart. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more on that. Um, the... The thing that that surprised me the most about it was the community. Um, yeah, because these are real relationships that that we're having. Um, 
And honestly, the value that it has brought me has been, man, I don't even know if I can if I can accurately describe how much value it's brought. I think when I signed up, um, now granted my channel hadn't been going long, I think only about six months when I signed up for that course, I'm right at a year now. And I think when yeah. I started, I was only at like 200 subscribers, maybe just a little right. above it. And now I'm, I don't know, a little over 600 right now. Because one of the things that you really got me out of my head, uh, and again, you reminded me just before we started recording <laughs> this, because for those that didn't know, off camera, Trey and I are talking, I was like, oh, I'm still trying to fix this and fix this, and I want to do this just right, and I need all of this. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, um, well, how's that saying go that uh, personal is more powerful than, uh, oh yeah, professional? <laughs> and so right. there's so much value that I have received out of this that I, when I knew you were doing another one, I'm thinking this podcast is a perfect opportunity for me to interview you, uh, obviously for content for me, but for content totally. for those that are listening, because they mm -hmm. need to hear who you are, what you're doing and why it's important for them. For somebody that would go over to your website, and again, it's vlogyourministry.com, if they were yeah. to sign up for your course, what are they looking at for cost and what are they looking at for how long does this course last? What can they expect to get out of it aside from just the, the community group that we've got? Yeah, well, let me speak into like your quality, man. I love your channel. It's a huge encouragement to me. Um, I just, I love how you're innovating and thinking of new things and really you're ahead of the curve on so many things and it's just a blessing to see that. Uh, I just love that, you know, when you make it big one day, I'll, I'll say, you know, like I had a small part of that. So I'm, I'm <laughs> right. reality. So there's that. Uh, but the other thing, yeah, so the courses. So there's actually technically three different options, but what I'm most passionate about, I think what's helped the most is the cohort. So I have on there, you have the silo. So you have the log your ministry silo course, which means you're all alone. It's $97 and it's just the six sessions, but we never meet. You're never part of the Facebook group. Uh, as somebody who just desperately wants some of the content, but they can't quite afford anything else. I just thought, well, I would rather give people that opportunity than not. Uh, but the cohort is 197. These are all lifetime memberships. And so with the cohort option, uh, which is the first that you see on the vlogger ministry, um, dot com. But that one is the, you get invited into the private Facebook group. You have the same material as the silo course. However, you, you get that private Facebook group and, uh, there's six sessions. So there's six different zoom calls that address that. So that first session is audience access attention. And so we talk the whole time, Hey, let's work through together. Who is your audience? For some people, it's strictly non-believers. Other people, it's strictly believers. And somewhere in between, we talk about access. So in other words, how can you peel back the curtain in your life? Yes. People are inspired by you on the pulp, on the podium, the pulpit, but what about when you go home. And that's really the power that I think that we're able to do here online. And what's really fun that I didn't imagine, but duh, this, these aren't just pastors. These are regular people right. or some people who aren't ministry leaders at all, but guess what? We're all called to ministry. And so that's been encouraging to me that there's been people taking this course. They're like, Hey, I'm just a, you know, I, I, I'm just a school teacher, but I'm, I'm finding this valuable. So that's been really cool. Uh, so the Zoom calls really help encourage one another. Again, the powerful part about it, it's not just me answering all the questions. Uh, that's why I've always loved that you've been hopping on because you were part of the first round, but the second round, you brought so much value to other people kind of answering questions. Uh, what's cool, it's like you, I think of you and like Jason Mayfield and Dennis and and quite a few others, but like you guys make videos a little different than I do. We all do something different. And yeah. so the, like the talking head videos, uh, I don't have as much to, uh, uh, you know, advice to give cause I don't do it very often, but right. you and Mayfield, you guys do it a lot. And so you're able to really speak into that. So that's what the cohort is. And, um, like what we were just talking about, I've, I've had a crazy, I was just in Malaysia, but I really want to do another zoom call just out of the blue. There's no real agenda, but Hey, what questions do you guys have? You know? So it's also just beyond those six sessions. Yeah. Uh, it'll be with it's, uh, so it'll start June 17th and it's six Mondays straight. So boom, boom, boom. Um, every Monday at 1230 Arizona time, we meet together. Uh, and then it's random stuff from there. But then you have the mentorship program, which I, I should be more professional about this, but I think I opened it back up 
it's more expensive. I think it's at like, oh man, like four ninety seven. But with the mentorship, it's one on one. So you get the group calls. You still get all the cohort benefits. Plus, I talk to you one on one, and we we work through really specific stuff that you're dealing with, and I kind of help pro- coach you along the way. Yeah, yeah. And for those of you that are part of my audience right here, Trey was gracious enough to actually open up a promo code. So if you guys are interested, you can get a 10% discount. Once you sign up, just in the promo code spot, you're going to type in cohort hyphen veteran. And I'll have a link down all caps. You put that in there. 10% 10% off the sign up. So oh. that's going to save you 20 bucks on that cohort, which really drops it down to 180. That I'm telling you guys, it is worth every single dollar you will spend on it because what you're doing is you're investing into what God is able to do in you and through you in an online fashion, especially and primarily here on YouTube. But now this goes beyond because he's really given us the tools and the tips uh, that we need for online video in general, which is the fastest growing medium out there. So these principles that you're teaching, Trey, that can help us whether we're on YouTube, whether we're on Instagram, whether we're on Facebook, whether we're on LinkedIn, whether we're on TikTok. I mean, any of these that are really leveraging video, the principles that you have there can be leveraged so immensely. So I'm excited for that. I'm pumped for that. I get no kickback just for full disclosure or anything. And even if Trey could. Even I wish if I Trey wanted back. to, I wouldn't <laughs> allow him to. I'd be like, dude, you keep it. Um, because the, like he the said. The online platform I use, I have to pay like $200 a month to give people kickback. I can't afford it. So I'm like, right, 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 no. guys. <laughs> no, and, and that's the thing. It's And I know that's not your desire, but like no. people have asked. I'm like, I wish I want to help, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I honestly am not a fan of that idea because – the the whole concept like you had shared about why you do it and and this is something a lot of people don't understand those that are in ministry especially in a pastoral ministry they don't get it uh, in any type of a vocational ministry unless you've walked you know in those shoes you don't understand the drain sure i mean we only work right. one hour a week that's all we do yeah. but um, <laughs> but no and a lot of the times pastors are forced to get a secondary or a third or a fourth job just to be able to sustain their family and their livelihood. And I'm all for anytime we can give back to those that are in ministry, the the laborers. I truly believe the scripture that the workman's worthy of the hire, that we should not be muzzling the ox while they tread out the grain. Uh, And those that actually labor in preaching and teaching the word are worthy of double honor. So I don't want you to give any of that away to me. So you keep all that. Um, And I want you guys to sign up for this because like, like Trey was saying, it's all of us that are back in there. So we've got people, if I remember right, that are starting out, they haven't even launched a YouTube channel or anything yet, all the way to people Mm -hmm. that are just under like 100,000 subscribers that are part of this group. Is, Is that about right? Yes. Yeah, we have that Christian vlogger, which I think is at like 91,000 subs right now. Um, We have people at like, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of literally all all the different ranges. So that's what's fun about the Zoom calls. Sometimes there's very advanced questions and then there's sometimes super basic questions. And I and I and I appreciate that you talked about how these principles apply. That's kind of what I've really focused on is hey like honestly the 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 aspect i'm really thinking about is the people aspect the principles of just leading people and so like uh you help a whole lot more because people are like what camera with this with that and i'm like i don't care about that stuff (laughs) like i'm not technical (laughs) at all but i do think more about like what is your communication style let's help you figure that out what is you know and so that's kind of these principles i made sure to do because i think these will last a whole lot longer because if i made a course that said get this camera in three months it'll be so outdated you know and so uh, that's kind of been my mentality so i appreciate you picking up on that yeah yeah okay one thing i want to put out there for those that are doing especially for pastors because that's that's probably the the bullseye target for where your vlog your ministry is at um but you want to hit everybody on the the target in general but for those that are pastors especially that are thinking how does this benefit my local church Mm. i know you have some examples of how people have come to your church come to passion creek because of watching the vlog can you give a little insight on that for those that are listening 
Yeah, that that one's pretty big. I think there's so many different ways that it'll benefit your local church. I think first and foremost, too, you were setting an example of what it looks like to be reaching out to the world, right? You know, like on every Sunday, I'm telling people, be a witness, you know, share the gospel. And uh, part of like, I can't show them everything I'm doing, but a big part of it is like saying, look, like watch these videos. I'm trying to show you, like I, I am trying to live my life to the glory of God and share people about Christ. So even just the example alone, will really strengthen your flock um, yeah. in general. I also think it's a great way to infuse the vision of your church. Uh, for me, like, you know, you only have 30 to 35, 40, I don't know, depending on your denomination, your style of preaching. And it's really hard to communicate your vision every week, plus preach a whole length sermon. And so um, I definitely try to communicate our vision, overall direction of our church on Sunday mornings. But I also know, hey, I can really lean on using my vlogs as a way to communicate to people, um, to tell people the direction of the church we're going. So it's a really great way to keep our church unified. Mm -hmm. uh, but another thing is, especially what I've tried, started to do recently, as I take specific videos from YouTube or whatever that I think have a good message, and I put them as ads and uh, YouTube ads, Ooh, Facebook yeah. ads, and I target my city. And so I have it where only people in Queen Creek see this video that I'm sponsoring. And so that helps create the conversation that helps start people. So really my idea is like, oh, like they, they watched a video of mine. They felt related to it. Now they're going to try to watch more, right? Or a lot of times it's my call to action is our welcome to our church page, which is that welcome video you referenced earlier. And so it's like, hey, sign up, like here's what our church looks like. And so that's what I've really found help reach people in my city. I, honestly, I think you have to pay money for that um, because a lot of times people, I get views from New Zealand. I wasn't searching for people to get, but it's just how YouTube happens. Um, but when you pay money, even just five to $10, you'd be surprised how many people will see your video in your city. So I think it's really important. The videos that you promote in your city are not just, hey, come to me. I think a lot of it is, hey, I'm going to go to you and just bring you value where you're at. And so I think when we do that consistently and then randomly you go, oh, yeah, by the way, here's where we are. Come to my church. That has proved very beneficial for us. Um, we've had quite a few families that have come and stayed and are part of our church family uh, because of one of the ads that we put online. That is fantastic. I love that. Um, I want to flip the script just a little bit here because uh, one of the big goals for this podcast is not only to share the stra the stories of social media and how we're sharing God's love in the digital world, but also some of the strategies. Um, hmm. And so I know you've got a lot of this and I know a lot of it is what you offer in the vlog your ministry course again www.vlogyourministry.com to sign up. <laughs> WWJD. Um, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, here's, here's my question, okay? What is one of the biggest mistakes that you see Christians doing on YouTube? I know that's a, a big <laughs> question. Um, and and I, the reason I phrase it that way is just our humanity. We often have an easier time of looking at the negatives uh, that are happening. Um, so I don't want you to give me any specifics of any actual YouTubers, unless you feel, you know, so inclined that you just want to go ahead and just blast them. Um, but I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> I, see, yeah, I, I, there's a few others that uh, might do that. Uh, hashtag not your pastor. Not um, your pastor. Yep. <laughs> no, but <laughs> Jason Mayfield's going to listen to this and love it. I'll ask him the same yeah. question and he probably will. Um, and it'll probably be me. Yeah. But um, no. So what is one of the biggest mistakes that you see them doing? It can be just in theory of how they're using the platform or maybe yeah. a technical aspect. Uh, what would you say is one of those biggest mistakes? I even heard somebody talk about this somewhere the other day of how, how can we feel like we have to support a Christian movie? Like we, 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 like the Christian movies, a lot of them that they're creating, I know they're getting better and better, but you know, for the longest time it's just cheese ball, right? Just really bad. But we're like, but it's Christian. So we have to go and support it and we have to watch. And I think a lot of us have this mentality of the quality doesn't have to be great. I'm talking about Jesus. So you should watch me. And I think we just have this entitlement of, because I'm talking about Christ, I don't have to do amazing stuff. Just watch me. And I think right. it comes off as pretty arrogant. I think it comes off as not a servant, servant's heart. And so, like, I think we need to spend a lot more time in the quality, a lot more time in, hey, like, I need to make this captivating and I need to really relate to my audience. Um, I think, honestly, that, that phrase personal is more powerful than professional. I see a lot of Christians trying to go the professional route of trying to be really all buttoned up and nice and just presenting Christ in this 
perfectly, you know, professional way. And I just don't think that works. Um, I just think people see right through that. And so I think we need to expose ourselves a little bit more. I think we need to make fun of ourselves, but I also think we need to up the quality of what we're doing and not just expect you, you know what, I'm not going to work on my craft because I follow Jesus. So you should watch my stuff. You should feel guilty if you do. I think <laughs> right. we have to earn your view. You got, you only have so much time of the day and there's so much content out there for you to watch. And I respect that. If you don't watch my video, I respect that. I'm going to do everything I can to try to get you to watch my video. So I'm going to work really hard on upping my quality. I'm going to work really hard to get better thumbnails. I'm going to work really hard at improving my titles because I want to help bless them. And I want, I, I would hope like I, I'm honored that they spend any time on my channel and I want to, I want to honor them back by serving them and just never stop learning and, and having this heart of, and I always appreciate that about you. You're always adding something else. You're always learning yeah. something new. And I think a lot of Christian content creators, they take that for granted and kind of just have this entitlement slash professional vibe that I don't think really works on YouTube or right. anywhere. Right. Uh, and I, I think uh, there's a similarity there, uh, if I can interject this, with even just local church ministry. Um, I've had a lot of pastors that will wind up thinking that their competition is mm. the church in town. And right. I'm telling them, I was like, that's that's not your true competition. The, the, they're not going to church. So it's not the other church in town. The true competition that we have for people's time is the movie theater, is the mall, is sleeping in, is football right. in the afternoons. It's all of these other things that are competing for their time and their attention. What are we doing to show that Jesus is better? What right. are we doing in that aspect? Uh, and and yeah, good. I see the same thing on YouTube a lot. Uh, you had mentioned this where people are giving us our time. And it reminds me of what I heard uh, Nick Nimmin say, which for those that don't know, mm -hmm. Nick Nimmin is another one of those uh, YouTube strategists uh, that's out there. And he's got some amazing stuff. And I was sitting in one of his uh, sessions down at uh, Video Marketing World. And he said that time is what people are giving you. Time is the most important um, really aspect of our lives because it's the only right. commodity that we have that we'll never get more of. And so when right. people are giving you their time, they're actually giving you their life. And you mm -hmm. need to make sure that you're providing them That's value good. for that life, uh, which is something I appreciate from, from your videos because there is the value there. There is the quality. You're doing what you can to make sure that it's not you just going around and showing your life, but you're trying to really give people some actual practical information that they can apply in their own lives to help them grow in their faith in Christ. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's even like, I just, my last video I uploaded was nine hour layover in Tokyo. And, uh, I, in the video, somebody commented they're thankful because I said, man, this has been fantastic. Me and my wife, we already fought and, you know, and I just, <laughs> you know, it's not a vacation, you know, it's not really a trip without that. And I, right. even that, like even just that little thing of hey, life, you know, it's real, like it as real. Pastor, we don't have it all together. And this is a part of life. It's taking the blows. It's realizing that, you know, things don't always work out, but we're still going to be positive. We're still going to press through. So sometimes the lessons are subconscious. Sometimes they're quick little things, but all those things building off. If that was my only video I ever uploaded, it wouldn't be very valuable. But I think over the course, doing a lot of those videos, a lot of different things, I think it's what really brings a lot of value to people's lives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, well, hey, this has been awesome. But before we yeah. go, I have one thing that I'm going to start introducing into the podcast that is going Ooh. to be hopefully fun. I'm going to call it the Fast Five. This is going okay. to be five rapid fire questions. I want your initial response on each and oh, one no. of those. Trey Van I'm Camp, nervous. are you ready for the Fast Five? I guess so. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Question number one. What is your favorite city in the U.S. besides the one that you live in? New York City. How long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite Disney princess? Is that a princess? I'm trying to figure out. 
I don't know the print. I should know. Oh, you know what? Ariel, because it's my daughter's favorite right now. Okay, Ariel. there you go. Uh, what is the place that you would most want to travel to? Me and my wife always say New Zealand. All right. And on uh, the final question of the Fast Five, on a scale of one to ten, how good are you at wiffle ball? I got hand-eye, so give me a solid six. All right, there we go. There we go. So that was Trey Van Camp with the Fast Five. A uh, bunch of fun little questions. Hey, Trey, if people are wanting to connect with you, aside from signing up for the course at vlogyourministry.com, how can they connect uh, with you? What social platforms are you at? What is your handle? Tell us all the uh, the facts, the details. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, all my handles are at Trey Van Camp, T R E Y. And then van camp, you spell, I always tell people it's like you're camping in a van. Okay. So it's not Trey band camp. It's not anything else. It's now that's going to stick probably, but it's van camp. <laughs> and uh, so just look up Trey van camp on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I don't know. I'm probably on LinkedIn. I need to get on that more. Uh, but yeah, do those things. And I would love to connect with you. Honestly, I, like all everything I do is to honestly connect. So please send me a DM that you know josh sent you i'd love to hear about your life story what you got going on i'd love to encourage you any way possible awesome amazing i love it trey thank you so much for being on here thank um, you i appreciate it so much so there we go i just want to thank you guys so much for sticking with us i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions about anything we mentioned in the show we will have it down in the description below you can check out all of the links make sure you go and check out the vlog your ministry at vlogyourministry.com and if you happen to be listening to this on the Apple Podcast app, I just want to encourage you to go ahead and leave it a like, a review. That will help us to spread this out and reach a greater audience. And I would greatly appreciate that. Don't forget, you can also share it on all of your favorite platforms. And when you do so, make sure you tag me at Joshua Verwers. Now, until next time, I just want you all to stay blessed, enjoy God's best, and have a great day.